The British Health Secretary says that football players need to play their part in this crisis and take a pay cut. Now, the controversy concerns lawmakers to calling to tax various football clubs because what they're doing is the players are not taking a tax. The players are continuing to receive full salaries whilst the clubs, or some of them, are furloughing the non-playing staff so that the governments are picking up the pay bill. In contrast, Atletico Madrid players and coaches today are taking a 75% cut to cover non-paying staff. And the Premier League says, to give them an idea, players making $75,000 a week on average, 75000 a week on average, amongst the worst world's highest paid athletes. Gary Lineker is the uh, former England striker and the host, of course, of the BBC's Match of the Day. Uh, Gary, good to have you with us. Thank you, sir, for taking uh, time. Um, in short, the Premier League has found itself on the wrong side of this uh, controversy, haven't they? The players should be taking a cut so that the ground staff don't get laid off. Uh, well, um, it's if, it, if we're only that simple. Um, obviously, I think players will do will take a cut. Um, we're generally on the whole coronavirus thing a couple of weeks behind um, Italy and Spain, um, both of which have announced recently that players are going to take cuts. Um, Barcelona's seventy percent cuts. Um, Juventus are not getting paid. The players there, um, Atletico Madrid, you just mentioned, that's come out today. Um, we're a little bit behind, but I'm pretty confident um, that there'll be something announced um, with teams and players in the not-too-distant future. Um, we do tend to um, have a go at footballers quite easily. They're easy game. Um, yes, they get paid a lot of money, but I'm sure um, they want to help. They're consistently very good in the communities. And uh, I'm sure over the coming days that, that footballers will stand up and um, to be counted either taking pay cuts or making um, donations to charities or, or staff workers that are non-playing. Um, so I'm confident that will happen, um, but it takes time. And, and everyone here is jumping on the bandwagon. Politicians do tend to do that occasionally, especially at football's expense. So um, if I'm wrong, then I'll, I'll be um, as critical as anybody else. I was about to say, that's really the point, Gary, isn't it? I mean, these things take time and providing the momentum's in the right direction. But as you just said, if this doesn't happen, uh, then you will believe that that's wrong and they should, correct? Uh, if it doesn't happen, yes, absolutely. Um, but as I say, um, I'm, I'm fairly confident it will. I'd be very disappointed if it doesn't. Uh, I think some of one or two of our clubs have... Um, kind of thrown their players under a PR bus in many ways um, by um, announcing that they're cutting staff salaries and putting them on furlough um, for payments, um, and but not affecting the players' um, wages. Now, obviously, the players' salaries, um, that was not announced by the players, but it was announced by the club. So let's wait and see. Let's be a little bit patient here. Let's not all jump on the judgmental high horse and just wait and see how it pans out over the next week or so. And um, I'm confident and I'll be very disappointed if the players don't do the right thing, which I'm, I'm sure they will. I realise in the grand scheme of things, the cancellation of a season is, is sort of relatively minor, except for the fact so many tens, if not hundreds of millions of people get such enjoyment from it and will be looking forward intently to not only the Premier League but all the other leagues in Europe coming back on stream again when the time is right. Um, will this have had... What, what do you see as being any medium to long-term effect on the game of what's happened when it returns? Well, as you say, it's, a, it's about perspective first and foremost, and football is not the most important thing in the world at the moment, um, but to a lot of people in the world, it is a very important thing. Um, none of us really know at present um, when football will start again in various parts of the world, um, whether it will be this summer, whether it be late summer, uh, who knows? We don't know. Um, obviously, economically, it's um, having a hugely devastating effect on, on football. Um, billions of pounds will, will be cost because football can't exist without football, obviously. 
Um, so it, we, we don't know at present. I, I imagine the giant clubs, the huge clubs in the world uh, will survive this. I think a lot of clubs in the lower tiers of, of all sorts of different countries over the world uh, will have enormous economical problems after this, as will business in all sorts of ways and all sorts of sports as well. Um, how devastating? It's impossible to guess. When will football start again? It's impossible to guess. Um, there are more important things going on, health, safety, lives of uh, millions of people. So, uh, But at the same time, it's OK um, to wonder when football will come back. It's OK to miss football because it's an important part of our lives. Perspective, obviously, um, but we are allowed to miss it. I miss it. It's, it's, it's part of my life, a major part of my life, always has been. As both as a player and now as a broadcaster. Um, and I, I genuinely miss it. But um, there are, of course, uh, more important things with, with this dreadful crisis that's going on at the moment. Mm -hmm.